there everyone and um, welcome back to Arrow Craft or you're very welcome if you're new to this channel this is a channel where I share my passion for traditional archery and DIY and basically the DIY part is I just share uh, some of the techniques or how I make some accessories for archery as well as arrows and some other stuff uh, we'll be also having some fun uh, practicing a little bit of archery as well of course Today's video uh, is a follow-up from my first video where I show one of the techniques that I use uh, when I make my arrows and it's going to be focusing on the fletching process so I'll be providing some explanations, some tips about how I like making certain things about the whole fletching process and the next four or five videos again we it's going to be a follow-up from that first full arrow making video uh, focusing on different steps so the one after is going to be on knockings or knocks uh, and the one after on how I make the arrow shaft perhaps a different technique that I showed in that first video and so on and so forth uh, don't forget to give it a like as a token of appreciation and subscribe if you like what you see I really hope you enjoyed today's video so one of the first things that I do then is to make sure that the blade that I'm going to use, so I'm going to be using the elliptical uh, clamp and because this clamp sort of wraps around a little bit the shaft, we need to make sure that we adjust the fletching jig in the best possible way so there are not any gaps between the blade and the shaft and again this is one of those cases where having this um, flexibility uh, or this, this this ability to move inwards or angle in any direction is an advantage right so for this I'm just gonna place the shaft here and all I want to see right now is that the blade where should I put the blade so it makes a full contact so what I do is I just press it down and hopefully you can see that for example in this case there's still a bit of a gap here even though it's doing full contact here so I'll just angle it a little bit like this and push it down and sometimes with these clamps we need to really push hard down so it goes around and I think that is perfect so I'm just gonna tighten it up here at the back secure it so if we notice here, um, the blade is pretty much on top of the shaft at this point and at the back it starts wrapping around backwards here and it is um, resting more towards us. So that's effectively what gives it that elliptical um, shape uh, when we put the, the feathers on and of course that's going to make the feather spin and uh, create more uh, stability on the fly. If I, for example, then compare it with the straight uh, clamp, we will see that it is that the wrapping around doesn't quite happen here. Okay, one more thing on when we do elliptical fletching in particular, um, you might have noticed I'm using. Um, a right wing, what is called a right uh, wing clamp. So in the case of the Vincent Burger clamps, it would it would be written here. The other way of telling which wing does the the clamp correspond to is that, of course, if you look at it like this. So this is the the surface where it holds. If we keep that straight. The beginning of the feather will be here and it starts going wrapping around the shaft towards the right in this direction and that is important because 
when we fletch the arrows, if I show you a fletched arrow, so as we can see on this um, arrow, we already have fletched the, the feathers onto the shaft and there is this natural movement wrapping around the shaft towards the right and that's because we're using right wing feathers and that means that as the, as the, as the arrow travels, the wind travels this way and it sort of pushes, makes contact with the feathers from this side underneath so it's, it's making it, it's making it um, rotate clockwise clockwise if we are looking at from behind and basically this is just respecting the natural aerodynamic design of the feathers um, the wind the, the, the feathers is in such a way that the, the wind will push it from underneath we don't want to we don't, we don't want to be if we wanted to rotate in this direction we don't want to be mixing uh, the feathers and that means your feathers need to match the as i mentioned already need to match the the clamp because this clamp is going to help that natural it's going to help that it's going to follow that natural shape of the feather um if we compare it to a straight fletching for example in this case it really wouldn't matter generally speaking you should be consistent so if you're using left uh, feathers only put left feathers in this uh, in this arrow or in the other one only right or on so on and so forth but try not to mix them um so these ones are also right feathers i'll show you with these uh, feathers it might be easier to notice this um, the filament will start flushed with the base on on the on, on one side and on the other side on the underside of the feather we'll notice that there is a, a bit of a, a leap or a, or a recessed so kind of of, of um, an L shape and this is telling us that if this recess this leap goes to the left that means we have a right wing feather so that's another way of telling whether your the feathers you have belong to a right wing or a left wing of uh, the bird so one thing is if we hold them from the from the tip it will tend to go to the right if i show you the other color they all tend to go to the right or they tend to to bend inwards where that leap is for these arrows for example i had left wing feathers so if we notice so if you can see there is the lip here and that lip is going to the right so this is the underside of the feather but because this is straight fletching it doesn't quite matter but you'll notice that they all are left wing so there's no lip here lip here so we know this is the underside Okay, so um, the one last step before I start putting on the feathers onto the shaft is to mark where those feathers are, are going to be. And for that, I use this um, little marker that I've made using PVC sheet. So this is two pieces of PVC sheet and one of EVA form in the middle. And I just use a, a hole saw to drill through it just to get this round shape. And then on each side, I just um, stack either a uh, cross to mark um, four feathers if I'm using four feathers or uh, three feathers depending on the case and you'll notice also that there's a notch on this and that's just to allow me to um, put this in place or remove it uh, when the so it doesn't get stuck with the with the with the uh, ridge here of um, the, the knock so in this case, I'll, I'm going to be doing a four feather uh, fletching. So I'll just move that in place. And as you can see in this one, I have already marked. So for this one, I was using a, a white pen. So once I move this, move this to place, I'll simply just mark beforehand where those feathers are going to be uh, sitting. And in that way, I don't have to worry about that once I am working here on the fletching jet. So as I explained before, before I used to mark it here and then um, all I had to do was to rotate the shaft and then the feather would 
um, touch this uh, guide here as well and that, that was another way of doing it but then I realized that sometimes I use two feathers, sometimes I use four so I just uh, decided to um, change how I was doing that and I resorted to these kind of markers um, kind of it's, it's just easier in the end the other thing to consider here is um, the distance between where the string sits and where the feathers start um, and in my case because I practice a, a fast shooting techniques what I do is I, I want to be able to grab this comfortably um, so that if I'm using more than one uh, arrow just take this one here when I'm shooting I'll be growing more than one arrow and for that um, I'll need space to grab the arrows uh, as I peel them off and shoot without damaging the feather so in this case I always just use my own hand as a guide um, if I'm doing multiple arrows then I'll just use my hand as a guide and then I'll take a standard measure and then I'll mark all the shafts um, accordingly and now we'll proceed to put the feathers so I'll just get all my feathers ready I'm going to be using red and black as in my first video and I'll just have um, super glue, standard super glue. Sometimes I use the the bare tape, um, but because these arrows are, I'm gonna actually be shooting them. I tend to prefer super glue as opposed to the sticky tape. I found that uh, over time the sticky tape does tend to peel off, whereas uh, the super glue doesn't. So in this case, I'm gonna be using super glue. So I spot where they the reach of the knock is for speed shooting and I'm gonna be putting that down, um, facing downwards I do this here the other thing that I'm gonna make sure it is perfectly in place before I put the glue on the feathers is once more get the clamp align it to the holder here and push it down and really what I want to see is to align the blade to where that mark is in this case i need to move the shaft back um so as you can see i just move it forward a little bit and that would be where the the feather will be sitting so if we look underneath there's one feather and that would be where i want it with that done we can remove the clamp and then we can proceed to uh, clamp the feather and apply glue so it's, i like um, grabbing the clamp uh, pointing towards the front so the back of the feather will be towards me then we just open the clamp and I'm just gonna align the back of the feather right with the edge of the clamp here I just keep this a little bit open So the first thing is just to make sure that all of the filaments of the feather are caught in the clamp and then uh, in this case I just need to move it a little bit backwards too much okay that's perfect now one one trick that I do is when I grab the glue um, I use this same hand to hold the lid because one of the things you uh, want to be doing is that as soon as you finish applying the glue you want to be able to um, close the lid on the glue so it doesn't dry obviously and you don't want you don't want to be all over the place doing that so just prepare in advance for that um. because I use these feathers for actual shooting I tend to be a little bit generous with the glue right if there's any gaps when I was squeezing the glue out then I'll just go back and then kind of rub it a little bit and there you go so easy to put the lid back on and then I'm ready to just uh, place it in the jig so the first thing before I push it down to put it on the magnet I align it to the edge there and then I know that now I can push it down and press it down against the shaft there 
is making all contact right on to the mark and we wait uh, two three minutes for the super glue to uh, dry and then we'll repeat the process three more times now that roughly two minutes have passed um, the super glue should already be dry so we can just open the clamp and pull it upwards and there you go and the next thing is then we just rotate the shaft until I more or less see the next mark so once more before I put the feather on the clamp I just want to make sure that the mark is already in line with the beginning of the clamp so that'll be roughly around there there so I don't have to worry about that anymore and then we grab the next feather in this case gonna be the red one that is a fully fledged arrow now so because we use the markers we can see they are very well spaced out turned out quite nice we have enough space for me to do to grab multiple arrows at the same time and then be able to do the peeling off of speed shooting okay so the last step in the fledging process is to put a bit of binding at the beginning and uh, at the end of the feathers and that binding has basically uh, two functions one is to reinforce the feathers so as we shoot them and the arrow goes through uh, different surfaces uh, the feathers don't detach from the shaft so we are gonna bind it here and here the binding here at the back would also help reinforce the uh, the knock um, in this case and at the front what is going to help is to smooth this transition so if we are practicing traditional archery where we shoot uh, with the arrow resting on our hand if we leave these edges here it can be quite hurtful and sometimes we can actually get cuts from uh, these edges here as the as the arrow leaves the, the bow and, and it passes over the hand so Putting a bit of binding is gonna um, help prevent that. So the string I'm going to be using is a silky uh, type of string. This is uh, 0.25 of thickness, if I'm not wrong. It's just a very strong type of string, um, strong enough to for our purposes. Uh, it also looks nice and it goes with the feathers, that's why I chose the color. The other thing we want to have handy is the glue and a um, utility knife um, to maybe just to remove a little bit of the filament at the front and at the rear as I, I'll show so in what follows what I'm going to do is apply a bit of glue in there have the string line on the bit of glue let it cure for a minute or two and then I'll start uh, wrapping it in that direction towards the edge but as I mentioned before we do that, I'm just going to go around the tips and maybe just removing just a little bit of the filament, just make it smooth out. there and then very gently I'm gonna start sort of going around at the back and at this stage I'm not worrying so much about tightening um, or pulling the string just wanna 
just want to get at least two wraps around just to get them ready just give it a minute or so so now I can feel that it's not gonna move the the, the first bit of the string that we we anchor there with the glue so in that case I'm gonna start tightening slightly that first loop that I did again at this stage I don't care so much about applying too much force I don't want to pull all the way the string I just put on all right now once I have gone over at least once over the, the initial um, piece of string I can start pulling stronger and I can start rotating the shaft whilst keeping a firm grip on the string therefore just pulling as I as I rotate the shaft I think that would be enough binding. I'm gonna choose to stop it here where there's that blip of glue as well. Now I could hold it here for a minute or so or we can just uh, clamp it if you have some sort of like um, clothing pegs. So what I'm going to do now is just to cut that string and the front is complete. Now for the binding on this side, uh, we're basically going to do the same process. So I'm going to start by um, giving myself room for the binding at the back of the feather so I'm gonna be removing some of the filaments here at the back okay there we have it so we have some space to place the binding here at the back without having to go over some of the the filaments of the feathers very last step that we're gonna do is just to seal this binding so in my experience over time when you shoot arrows over and over even if you have um, glued these ones as I have done um, they'll start fraying and eventually they just um, unwind we are just gonna cover the binding with resin I like using resin uh, especially the ones that you mix with two different uh, compounds because the finished product is very smooth. Then very gently, we'll, what I like doing is just applying a 
very thin layer over the binding. I'll then just swap to do the rear. And after this, it's just a matter of letting it cure properly. Um, so in this case, because I use the same um, glue that I prepare, um, I, I didn't want to waste it. So I used the same preparation for front and back. When I was applying it at the back, uh, when I was just finishing here, it was already starting to, to harden. So you could see a, a difference here in the texture. Um, most of the time, if you can just prepare glue a uh, resin for front and back separately, so you don't have that issue as I did here. Um, but I wouldn't say it turned out too bad. Um, like I said, this is just for uh, the finishing touches. I think it makes it more durable, the binding. And with this, we complete the whole fletching process. I hope you found this uh, entertaining or useful in any way. And um, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe if you can. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in the next video.